Welcome to this series of classes by Dr. Johnson C. Philip. He is a foremost Christian apologist and Bible expositor with a worldwide demand. Please press the subscribe button below this video and then please click the bell icon near it. This will ensure that you never miss any valuable video of Dr. Philip. God bless you. Teaching Bibliology has been a, a great blessing to me because ultimately all what we believe, ultimately everything depends upon the Bible and therefore we should be very clear about what the Bible speaks about itself. As I mentioned earlier, a change that has taken place among us is that instead of looking into the Bible, things which are clearly mentioned in the Bible, instead of looking into the Bible to see things which are clearly mentioned in the Bible, we have started looking here and there. And uh, when we look here and there, the world of theology is dominated by radicals. A radical is a person who rejects everything. They dominate and whatever they say, we accept it as God's word. That is how, though the Gospel of Matthew was the first to be written, most of us believe that Mark was written first. That is the reason why, though Revelation, the book of Revelation was written before 70 AD, though all the books of the New Testament were written before AD 70, we keep on teaching our children that book of Revelation was written around AD 95. It is their influence because of which we make stupid claims that a certain church council gathered and decided which books are to be included in the Bible. And they give you a number of criteria. Using these criteria, books were selected. That's the most stupid idea that has come into the field of bibliology because instead of looking into the Bible, we are looking at the face of theological radicals and they whatever way they want to manipulate us, they manipulate and they twist us. Before going further, some related things are to be mentioned. I hope all of you are members of the BTI group. There is a group by the name of BTI, which stands for Brethren Theological Institute. And in that group, I had asked a question, is there any university in India which offers theological education. Is there any university? Dr. K. M. Samuel, an esteemed brother, he wrote that Sarampur University is authorized to give theological degrees. Brothers and sisters, there is no university in India by the name of Sarampur University. A list of all the universities is given by UGC. Once India became independent, and an institution can call itself a university only and only if it has UGC authorization, University Grants Commission. And University Grants Commission has never authorized anyone to call itself Sarampur University and no institution offers a degree where it is written that it is offered by Sarampur University. Let me tell you, when a university offers a degree, the university puts it, its name. I got my BSc, MSc, and PhD, all in physics, from Jivaji University. The moment you open the degree, the top line says, 
Jivaji University. There is nobody in India who can show a degree offered by Sarampur University. Ask them to show it to you. Then why everybody is uh, saying Sarampur University, Sarampur University? Because we theological conservatives, we who believe in the Bible, we are idiots. The radicals, theological radicals, they reinforce each other. And they have given an impression to Christians all over India that there is a university by the name of Serampur University. There is no university. UGC has never authorized a university by that name. And let me tell you one more thing. India is a secular country. A secular country will never allow a university to offer theological degrees. You may say, well, Mysore University has uh, theological degrees. No. Mysore University has a department of Christian studies. Christian studies is different from theology. Christian study means studying Christianity as an outsider. And people who conduct the examination, particularly the exam external examiners, they are all Hindus or almost all of them are Hindus. One is a Vedanti. One, uh, one is an expert in another branch of Hinduism. You may say, how do you know? I am a council member of Mysore University, Department of uh, Christian Studies. I am a council member. I attend the meetings. And when Department of uh, Christianity council meeting I attend, one is an expert in uh, Vedanta. Another is an expert in Sankhya philosophy. Another is an expert in uh, another philosophy. They are all Hindus. And the chairman of the Department of Christian Studies, Mysore University Department of Christian Studies, the chairman is a Hindu. So Mysore University does not offer degrees in theology. India being a secular country, no university can offer a degree in theology. They offer degrees in Christian studies which any even an atheist can do and Mysore University I know firsthand because uh, I am a council member of Mysore University Department of Christian Studies and whenever I go for meetings I meet them with great joy uh, because I have a good background in Hinduism and the chairman in the last meeting the chairman was very very particular that one of these Hindus have to be called as external examiners so it is please remember in india ugc has not allowed any university to offer theological degrees because india is a secular country number two there is no university in india known as Sarampur university number three a lot of people claim that they have uh, a degree issued by Sarampur University. Ask them to show it to you. Ask them to show. And uh, uh, I will also show it. I have a degree. I have a BSc from Jivaji University, an MSc from Jivaji University, a PhD from Jivaji University. And on the top of the degree, circular, it says Jivaji University. Uh, ask anyone to show a degree which is issued by Sarampur University. Why did I take so much time to explain it? Brothers and sisters, we have come to a stage where conservative Christians, who, who are conservatives, you and I who believe the Bible to be the word of God, we have to take a strong stand. We have to take a strong stand for the scripture. 
the theological radicals have dominated the world of theology for 300 years we have to capture back and for that the first thing is you should understand bibliology and as part of bibliology you should know how the canon of the bible came into existence and please remember no human council decided the canon that is a radical teaching and we have been such idiots such dumb people that we just allow them to make any kind of proclamation and just believe it you may say brother uh, but then if i say matthew was the first they will ask me to give a proof let them ask who made the first claim they made the first claim that matthew was the first gospel so let them offer the proof first he who made the claim should prove it let them prove and then please contact me i'll give you enough proof for you to argue with them that matthew was the first gospel but this aggressive attitude of defending the bible has to be re captured with that let us go further in our study of uh, uh, bibliology and the canon as i told you johans gutenberg invented movable type printing press because of which composing and printing books became easy and that was a revolution which made it possible to print the bible and distribute a large number of copies large number of handwritten and also seal printed bibles were already available but now the arrival of the printing press movable type printing press made things very easy but as the mass production and distribution of god's word increased or exploded another development took place europe became free till then europe was under the dominion of the roman catholic church which very strictly suppressed what people can speak what people cannot speak but once freedom came on one side there was expansion of printing and distribution of the bible on the other side came attacks against the bible and please remember in 1600s 1700s europe was the center of education not usa usa did not even exist in 1600s usa as it as we know it today europe was the richest area in the world and all these riches came via plunder europeans they had a fantastic navy and using this navy they went worldwide subdued all rich countries like india please remember india was the richest country 2000 years ago in hindi it is known as sone ki chidiya the bird made of gold india was so rich so europe went and plundered the whole world and they had so much money riches that they did not know what to do that is the time when european universities came into existence and every university was liberally financed by the government in fact universities did not know what to do with the money that the government had given them but with the expansion of the universities came the spread of atheism why because now there was freedom of expression and since the church was an oppressive force all these centuries many people opposed the church i mean roman catholic church and with that opposition came opposition 
to Christianity. Eventually, atheists, rationalists, humanists, theological radicals, and also anarchists, people for, who loved freedom to live as they pleased, they multiplied. And once they multiplied, they started opposing the Bible because the Bible is against all this. And they brought a number of arguments to oppose the Bible. For example, number one, nobody has seen the original manuscripts. That was a very, uh, they considered it a powerful argument. And we are such idiots that we just believed that if, if nobody has seen the original, then what is the guarantee that we have that which is true? Another argument was that what we have are only copies full of errors. And when this, this argument is placed in front of people, they simply jump up. Why jump up? You don't know Greek. And the fellow is arguing against the Bible. He doesn't know Greek. Then how does he know? How does he know that there are errors? And how do you know that there are errors? Why should you be worried? And the third was, third argument was that hand copying cannot be trusted for accuracy. Look, for 5,500 years, please remember, 5,500 years since Adam, Everything was hand copied. So whatever you have, Aristotle or any other philosopher, it's, it all came to us hand copied. We consider them as accurate. So why make this claim that hand copying cannot be trusted? Today we know about Ashoka, King Ashoka. We know about uh, King Emperor Akbar, Babur. Humayu, lot of them. All information about them have come through hand copying. If hand copying cannot be trusted for accuracy, how do we recreate history? How do we write history? It is all humbug. But the problem is like Esau, we, the conservative Christians, we have sold our birthright to theological radicals. How did we sell? Why did we sell? Well, that is a topic related to church history. And Lord willing, we will come to that when we come to church history. Suffice to say that we who believe in the Bible, we who are Bible-believing Christians, we have literally sold our birthright to theological radicals and it is theological radicals who dictate terms in every area. It is time to recapture. Please remember, it is time to recapture all these things. Okay. Now, is it true that the originals do not exist? And the answer is yes, originals do not exist. Or even if they exist, we have not found them so far. That is a more accurate. We have not found them. Two, is it necessary to have originals? As I told you, here is a book. My memoir. It is in Malayalam. If there is anyone uh, among the participants today, uh, who has who does not have a copy and if you want a Malayalam copy please send me a whatsapp message I will send it to you it's an 800 page book where is the original I don't know you may say how can I believe it without the original listen you may have a number of books in your library have you ever seen the original and without original, do the books become uh, meaningless? 
no not at all it's a actually it is a straw man it is a false argument that we need to see the originals once the original exists in multiple copies we can always compare to see that there is no error in the copies that we have however there, there is one more thing that you should know a lot of things related to biblical history god himself saw to it that they are not preserved or oh, you may say brother johnson that is a shocking statement no it is not a shocking statement we have proof in the bible itself as to what happens if the original is preserved do you remember the snake in wilderness snakes in wilderness do you remember the bronze serpent what happened to the bronze serpent the bronze serpent eventually became a god to people of god and they started worshiping that bronze serpent and they gave it a name nehushtan they were worshiping god nehushtan so within the scripture we have evidence that if originals are preserved people will worship it so this is a biblical example let me give you an example from outside the bible the ark of noah is still there on mount arara only thing today it is under about 400 feet of solid ice you cannot drill through 400 feet of ice particularly it is at now at a height of 30000 feet listen to me 30000 feet an average person an average healthy person cannot go beyond 5000 feet the maximum that i have gone is 5000 and when i went to 5000 feet the first instruction was don't walk briskly and if there is a shortness of breath sit down take long breath if climbing beyond 5000 is so difficult just imagine 30000 feet and mount ararat at 10000 feet there is permanent lightning in fact one of the teams that went a few years ago was hit by lightning and many of the members were thrown away so today going to 30000 feet drilling through 400 feet of solid ice is impossible that is why today we are not able to see the ark of noah but till 1800 there was no ice like that climate has changed much and places where there was no snow now snow is deposit deposited but in 1800 when the ark of noah was completely exposed then strong and hardy mountain people and this lightning was not also not there strong and hardy mountain people they would climb up to the mountain of noah or the ark of ararat I, i'm sorry uh, the mount ararat they would go up to the ark of noah and please remember the bible says that ark of noah was covered with pitch that is a coal tar like substance which makes the ark waterproof 
they would go up to it and they would scrape it and put it in safe containers and bring it down and christian magicians were taking a very tiny portion of that scraped tar like material putting inside a small box tying to the neck of children for good luck for preventing bad luck malayalam that is known as elas hindi it is known as tavij so even up to 1800 we know that if anything original from the biblical history survives people worship it those of you who are curious to know about nehushtan please read second king chapter 18 verses 1 onwards second king chapter 18 verse 1 onwards to know about details and let me tell you brothers and sisters even today people go to what is what they call as holy land and do a lot of drama tamasha people who were baptized at the age of 18 they go to river jordan at the age of 68 they get baptized again what a mockery because baptism is to be administered only once and the baptism which is to be administered only once brother mithun kumar has uh, posted the reference in comment box thank you brother anyone who missed it you can look into the comment box so what a mockery of god's grace that people are going to the so called holy land and getting baptized again anything that is related to the original of biblical history creates a kind of worship idol worship in our hearts that is the reason why god did not preserve the originals and even if he preserved it they have not been discovered i told you that we know a lot of, about emperor akbar emperor ashoka babar humayun and a lot a lot, lot lot lots of rulers in india chandragupta vikramaditya everything has come in written form but what we have were produced hundreds of hundreds of years after their times i am sure that everyone here knows about aristotle aristotle lived in 4th century bc and the oldest manuscript we have see books of aristotle they are taught in uh, ba and ma um political science taught as authoritative but the oldest manuscript that we have today was is a copy hand copy produced 1400 years after the time of aristotle plato lived in 5th century bc and plato is also taught plato's books are taught in bsc ba ma philosophy the oldest manuscript we have today was produced 1200 years after the time of plato and we have only seven copies of that old manuscript a mere seven copies aristotle 1400 years after the original copy and all what we have is 49 copies what about the bible the old testament we have copies produced a few decades after the book of malachi was written 
New Testament, we have manuscripts which are less than which were produced less than 15 years after Gospel of Matthew was written. Some of the manuscripts we have of New Testament, they were produced before the canon was closed. And as I repeatedly mentioned, more than 35 to 40,000 manuscripts and fragments related to the Bible are available. So massive that some people devote their entire lives to study these manuscripts. Let me give you the exact number. The total number of New Testament manuscripts is more than 25,000. The total number of Old Testament manuscripts is more than 20,000. Now compare Aristotle and Plato. Plato, seven manuscripts produced 1,200 years after his time are available. And uh, Aristotle, 49 manuscripts produced 1,400 years after his time are available. Whereas New Testament, we have around 25,000 manuscripts and fragments. Some of the fragments, they came before the canon was closed. See, the canon was produced between 35 to 70 AD. There is a 35 year spread. And some fragments have come from AD 50. You may say, hey, brother, if that is so, why doesn't everybody speak about that? That's because we have sold our birthright to the deceptive people who don't believe in the Bible. And we don't have the courage to face them and tell them that these things are so. The total number of Old Testament manuscripts is more than 20,000. And today, brothers and sisters, I would like to introduce some of these manuscripts to you. And I'm sure you would enjoy see. Please rem remember, this is only a sample copy. If I show you the total number of copies available, you would be fed up. Even now, I am afraid that by the time I am uh, halfway, some of you might be fed up. The most interesting manuscript I want to bring to your attention is Dead Sea Scrolls. I am sure that all of you have heard about Dead Sea Scrolls. Dead Sea Scrolls were found or discovered around 1947. Uh, they were found in an area known as Qumran. Qumran is a desert area where you see these mountains made of hard mud. Just a minute. Uh, apologies. Okay. If you look at the center of the picture, you will see door like opening or a cave like opening. Actually, there were numerous caves here. Most of you have not seen caves in hard mud. I have seen dozens upon dozens of them in Chambal area because in Chambal area we have similar formations and they were used by the Dakoids to hide. Now, 
today this is a very unstable area and from ground up to that uh, uh, that entrance of the cave the distance is too much the height is too much there was a time when it was all slightly above ground but because of water there has been a lot of erosion and so the front portion has gone down because of erosion in 1947 some boys shepherds they threw a stone into one of these caves and suddenly they heard the sound of cracking they were terrified listen, listen this is desert and in desert when they heard a sound which was most most unexpected they were terrified they ran they told people in their village without realizing that people in their village they were given to smuggling and within days within days the people in those villages came and looted everything they could get from there everything and what they looted eventually came to be known as qumran scrolls or dead sea scrolls there is a slight uh technical problem and uh, i apologize for that um actually uh there was some software problem because of which i am having this problem okay now it is solved and let me take you back to the qumran caves and then i can i have many more pictures to share with you today yes all is well actually there were number of caves and hundreds upon hundreds of hand written scrolls jewish scrolls biblical scrolls everything was looted sold in black market for millions of dollars and many scholars had to work for many many years to contact sellers in the black market to pay them through the nose to acquire these documents this is an original photograph in at that time color photograph did not ex exist 1947 in 1947 when archaeologists came to know about these qumran caves teams upon teams of archaeologists went and in one cave they found scrolls sitting in a corner so since there was no color photography or color camera they took this photograph this is this is how a lot of scrolls were kept but this is not the only way they also found hundreds upon hundreds of mud jars uh these were actually found broken and the archaeologists meticulously put them together to show exactly how they looked so leather or papyrus hand written scrolls they were put into these jars and then these jars were closed sometimes sealed and kept in these caves 
the oldest bible related manuscripts have come from dead sea scrolls some of them are they were produced in 350 bc that is just 50 years after the book of malachi was written eventually hundreds upon hundreds of old testament scrolls were found many of the important old testament books they were uh, found in multiple copies eventually all the 39 books of the old testament were found there sometimes as one copy sometimes as multiple copy and do you know who these people were these were a group of faithful jews known as the essenes actually dr joyma asked me about the 400 silent period and while i mention dead sea scrolls it is a good time to mention the 400 silent silent years the last book of the old testament was malachi after malachi no books came and god did not send any prophets till the arrival of john the baptist however in these 400 years there was a very strong remnant everywhere among the jews and this remnant in malayalam sheship this remnant kept doctrines alive faith alive commitment alive and they kept on copying books of the old testament to spread them everywhere and also for their own use and please remember brothers and sisters we should always pray for peace in israel the bible commands us and please remember god did keep a remnant among them and it is such people and please remember hebrew became a dead language by approximately 400 bc and by by the time of lord jesus hebrew was completely dead lord jesus spoke aramaic not hebrew for more than 2000 years the hebrew language was dead nobody spoke it but god kept the fire in the hearts of certain people and they revived the hebrew language in 1900s and when israel became free hebrew language was declared as the national language many people from india go to israel for higher studies but they have to do their higher studies in the hebrew language they teach hebrew language first and then you study your higher degree in the hebrew language so these 400 years when there was no prophet when there was no more written revelation many 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 revival groups kept the jewish faith away a jewish faith alive and one of them was the essenes the essenes looked forward to a person very similar to messiah but the romans were opposed to these people and therefore romans were slaughtering them at a time when it seems that when the romans came to attack them the essenes hid all their thousands upon thousands of manuscripts in these caves and in this way god made a provision for us in the 20 and 21st century to get some of the oldest manuscripts and let me remind you these caves were impossible to reach because of erosion of the land you could not climb to the entrance of the caves and in this way god preserved hundreds upon hundreds of handwritten copies of the old testament and hundreds upon hundreds of other books related to jewish religious life 
here and almost all the books were looted sold in black market but israel realized that it is their national pride and therefore by paying whatever people asked they reacquired many of those documents and today all of them are preserved in a museum in israel visitors are welcome to that museum they can move all around the museum and see these manuscripts only thing what you see is a facsimile it is an identical copy of the original the originals are stored in a bomb proof vault air conditioned vault under the museum you are not allowed to go there but the facsimile which they have produced is so much identical to the original that many people from india who are leading tours to israel holy land tour those who conduct even many of them thought that this was original and one of them even argued with me ki johnson chayan it is original and then i had to show them information that these are not originals so these 400 silent years were very important when the remnant kept the faith alive kept on copying the old testament and kept the faith alive and from there we get the qumran scrolls or more popular name is dead sea scrolls let me show you a portion of one of the dead sea scrolls this is just a small portion of the longest scroll the scroll of isaiah the book of isaiah amazing isn't it and please remember this copy was produced hardly 50 years after the book of malachi was written and as i told you as each book of the bible was written those who wrote they recognized that it is the verbally inspired word of god not only they but also the prophets contemporary to them the priests contemporary to them and therefore in keeping with god's instruction the originals were preserved originally in the tabernacle and then in the temple of god copies were made copies were circulated no committee ever decided which book is going to be there in the bible it is god who decided and it is god who made clear and please remember don't be a sucker don't fall for all this propaganda of theological radicals you read the bible and you will find that how these books were recognized and preserved you read the new testament to see how these books were recognized and preserved god has been gracious the 66 books of the bible they were not decided by a committee people who people whom the holy spirit used they recognized it their contemporary prophets recognized it in the old testament their contemporary apostles recognized it in the new testament and i mentioned one verse from peter but there are other verses next time when you read the bible why not decide upon uh, a symbol and put that symbol everywhere where you find references about the canon and you are going to be stunned 
by what you are going to find in closing uh, lord willing we will be coming to the close of uh, uh, bibliology and canon in one more class after that we will move on to the subject how to interpret the bible i thank god that he gave us this opportunity the next almost all the class will be taken up by pictures and description of some of the most important manuscripts of the old testament and new testament please remember stand strong for your faith don't allow ignorance and don't allow theological radicals to kick you around like football take a stand for the word of god before i close i want to leave few questions with you how many years did noah take to build the ark two how many wise men came to see jesus three which of the thief accepted lord jesus as his savior the one on the left or one on the right four is there a verse in the bible which says that without shedding of blood there is no remission of sins without shedding of blood there is no forgiveness of sins four questions how many years did noah take to build the ark how many wise men came to meet lord jesus which of the thieves the one on the left or one on the right confessed and accepted jesus as his savior and which verse in the bible says that without shedding of the blood there is no remission of sins or there is no forgiveness of sins you are welcome to post your answers with reference directly to me don't please don't post in the bti group till i ask you to post this is a homework in preparation for bible interpretation bible interpretation which we will pick up lord willing after the canon dear friends i am confident that you enjoyed listening to this question answer video by dr johnson c philip he would love to get your questions please post your questions in the comment box below this video and he will prepare a video reply for you please post only one question at a time and make it as detailed as possible so that dr philip has no problem in understanding exactly what you mean also please encourage this ministry by subscribing to this channel below this video there is a subscribe button please click it also please click the bell icon near it to complete the process of subscribing thank you very much for being such an encouragement to our channel